Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another Daryl Brooks video. And this video will include a compilation of this fool in question. Oh, isn't it wonderful to know that this fool that we are looking at is guilty of all charges. <laughs> it's just a blessing to know that, that he will no longer experience what autonomy really is. Not again, because he robbed himself of that in light of his actions on that infamous day at the Waukesha Parade. Before I get started, those of you that can and will, uh, I know I get uh, a myriad of emails uh, from the audience that have great anticipation in light of me analyzing this fool in question, the sewer rat, that utter absurd sewer rat. And those of you that can and will, that would kindly give a donation. Listen, let me tell y'all, it takes time and effort and work putting, putting into this, discussing this fool. And, and a lot of times I don't really like to because y'all know I get upset. Y'all telling me, oh, 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 we love when you tell him to shot your mouth, shot your mouth. I know that's right. <laughs> and it does take a lot of time and effort. So those of you that can and will, would send a donation, come on and support and help the channel as we take down this sewer rat in question. That information to uh, or of the Cash App information is Lyle's Music. That is the information. Those, whatever you can give. I'm not asking for a large assessment, but whatever you can give. And we thank you, those that have been able to give. That has been a blessing in light of your support of this channel. All right, with that being said, y'all, let's dive into this. Again, this is going to be a compilation, a compilation of this fool in question. CF 1848 may have the appearances, please. Yes, good morning, Judge Sue Offer, Leslie Basie, and Zach Woodchow will appear on behalf of the state of Wisconsin. Sir, would you please state your name for the record? I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter. The parent is authorized representative for my client. I set the value of return to value all of the charges instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments, and for the record, I do not consent to being called that name. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is in street clothes, wearing uh, a suit and tie and a mask. I'm actually surprised he didn't come in there with his jail attire on. I don't consent to being called that name, Your Honor. I understand. For sir. the record. Just like he didn't consent to being sentenced. Like, who cares? Who cares? Okay, and. That's not going to stop anything. <laughs> we are underway. And I have advised you previously that I will continue to refer to you at times by that name, as I believe it's appropriate given the charging instruments in this case. And also given his signature on that ICF form. Tell me what other name other than Daryl Brooks was on there. Exactly. Come on, Judge Doro. Um, and other evidence now that's been received during the course of this trial where um, I believe we are using the accurate name. Exactly. With and the name who he identified by. Hello. That I do I need to... I don't agree to that, Your Honor. It don't matter that you don't agree. Who cares? I'm pretty sure you don't agree to being in jail, but guess what? You're there. I hate to say jail because that's too kind. That's an understatement. He's in hell where he belongs. Consent to that. <laughs> Your lack of consent is noted. If this was a ghetto court, she really should have said, "Your lack of consent doesn't mean shit, dog." No, <laughs> Cause, but because in theory it really doesn't. So why does he keep on saying that when it is without merit? It means nothing. 
is pointless. So what is the point? So before we uh, go f forward, I need to put a couple of things on the record. I know uh, Mr. Brooks has filed some things, but before I get to that, um, as I told the parties on Monday, I had excused one of the jurors for a health reason, um, and it has come to my attention that I now have a second juror um, with the same health concern. Out of an abundance of caution, I am going to bring the jurors out to question them about their, um, whether any of them have any uh, concern about continuing to serve on this jury, given uh, the health concern. I am referring to um, a COVID concern. Um, I'm not going to ask any particular juror whether they've tested positive or not, or whether they've had an exposure. I think I, but I am going to ask them questions about their uh, um, willingness to continue serving, whether it's interfering at all with their ability to pay attention. Um, out of an abundance of caution, we have brought in two air purifiers, although I am told uh, that because of the new building and the HVAC that's in this building, um, and I received this from our uh, facilities manager, the new HVAC system in the Quartz Tower has a UV light system that disinfects the air at a higher air exchange rate than the purifiers, and that the system was specifically designed so that no special standalone systems are needed. But again, out of an abundance of caution, we've had two air purifiers put in this courtroom. I'm putting a third one in the jury room. We have also uh, provided jurors, should they wish, uh, with masks. We've increased the hand sanitizers and the disinfecting wipes. We've always had uh, the hand sanitizers around. Uh, there's one on uh, the jury box at the moment, um, and they've been in uh, the jury room. I'd also like to put on the record that uh, I did advise the jurors on Monday that one of the jurors was not going to be with us any longer due to a health concern. I asked them at that point if anyone had uh, any concern. I did indicate at that point it was a possible exposure, and uh, they all indicated no, they didn't have any concerns. But again, out of an abundance of caution, I feel it's important to now uh, question them uh, while they're in the jury box uh, to ensure that there aren't any issues related uh, to that. So let, with that, I am going to instruct the jurors to be brought out. Now, let me say this. Now, all this is going to do is create an opportunity for Daryl to come up with some nonsense. Uh, Y'all remember he had a concern. He actually used, he would always say, use words loosely like, uh, oh, isn't it smart uh, to find out or... I mean, why would he even use the word smart? Let me ask, what did he ever do in this trial that was ever smart? <laughs> and so why should such, such a word come out of his mouth? Just like he said, you know, he it complained that the court was trampling over his rights. Why can't, why does he use such a word trample? <laughs> Given what he did, it's almost like he's in denial of the severity that he caused down at that parade. And he doesn't realize that he's actually using words that are easily debunked against him. That's how dumb he is. All right, let's continue. For that purpose. And then they'll be excused after that so we can continue uh, the discussion uh, regarding that and then deal with, if need be, the other uh, issues and filings that have been uh, brought to my attention today. Uh oh, you see, look, 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 look at that look on his face. He's getting, he's thinking of something. He's getting ready to say something. Watch this, y'all. <laughs> look how he's looking. You can already tell he' about to say something dumb. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, please. Um, no, not at this exactly. time. Exactly. Still has yet to be proven for the record. I don't know if the audio is on, but. Actually, I wish it wasn't on because he's saying nonsense. Come on. All right for the jury. 
Here we go. Here we go. Microphone available, please, if need be. They're behind you, I know, as you can see. By the way, if you notice, when Daryl Brooks thinks that something is going to go his direction, do you notice how he's calm? But when things doesn't go his way, then that's when he starts to be narcissistic. That's when the real Daryl comes out. Watch this. It's no different even in the trial. Well, after the trial. But when it was time for sentencing, you notice how I explained before how the power uh, initially uh, uh, was uh, given to the jurors and once they came up with their verdicts then there was a transfer of power back to the judge and so Daryl you know his attitude started to change because he knew that the judge would have a great impact relative uh, to his fate and so he started being a little nicer but when it was time for the judge to make her sentencing remarks and she started favoring Erica, then that's when that rage started to build back up. See, when it's going against him, then that's when the real Daryl comes out. And so this was, I mean, absolutely conspicuous throughout the duration of this trial, nonstop. This is why Judge Doro was far ahead of him. She knew his game. She knew that he was a narcissist, a narcissist. She knew of that. I mean, the way he treated Erica was no different than the way he treated Judge Doro in that trial. She was not dumb and wasn't falling for any of his antics as seen here. All right. The jurors are coming in. Let's get back in. Oh, wait. If you could bring me that. Look at that look on his face. He doesn't like what's going on. <laughs> because he knows the odds are against him. <laughs> he knows they hate him. I wonder which one of them flipped Thank you, them off. Everyone, please be seated. I mean, given that the trial's over, well, you know, they might as well come forth and say, hey, I'm the one that told him F you. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I brought you out here. We are uh, not taking testimony at the moment. I have made a record previously uh, regarding um, COVID-related concerns with the jurors. I know you are all aware that one juror was excused uh, due to a health concern. I also put on the record that on Monday when I advised the jurors of that, I asked you all if um, anyone had a concern regarding that and that no one indicated they had a concern. Um, I have been made aware of a second um, issue uh, and potential exposure. And so I wanted to make a record in open court and to ask each one of you if any of you have any concerns about continuing your service in this case due to exposure to uh, COVID. And so I'm just going to go uh, through each one. Um, Probably, hopefully I can see all of your numbers from here. I'll just start uh, from the back row and move from my left to right, front row, my left to right. And um, I also want to let you all know uh, we have a very, very good um, HVAC system. I made a record of this while you were not here. Um, but this is a new building. It has brand new technology. I've been told that the HVAC system in the Quartz Tower, and this was told to me by our uh, facilities manager, um, has a UV light system that disinfects the air at a higher air exchange rate than purifiers, but out of, out of an abundance of caution. And I've had two air purifiers also put in this courtroom, and I've had one put in um, the jury room. I believe you would be able to confirm for us as well that when you got into the jury room this morning, there were extra sanitation supplies along with masks. And so with that, I am just going to identify you by number. Uh, first of all, juror number 11. Um, do you have any concerns about continuing your service in this case uh, specifically related to COVID? No concerns. All right. Thank you. Uh, let me actually go back to you. Would, do, has it... Uh, would the fact that you may have been exposed in any way um, in interfere with your ability to pay attention uh, and ultimately render a verdict in this case? No. All right, thank you. And then, let's see, I know our 
Barnes vote. Juror number 48, if you could also answer those two questions. Uh, no concerns, both ways. All right, thank you. And then juror number 46. No concerns. Thank you. Juror number 34. No to both. Thank you. Juror number 27. No, also to both. Thank you. Juror number 30. No concerns to both. Thank you. Juror number one. No concerns to both. Thank you. And then what's your number? Six. Six, juror number six. No concerns for both. Thank you. You know what? By the way, uh, as the judge is basically polling the jurors in light of their concerns uh, with this COVID scare, you know, I'm actually surprised that, you know, some of them didn't say, you know, there is a concern. You know, not that there was a real concern of COVID, but just a concern just to not be on on this jury panel. Given, you know, all this chaos that they have to deal with every time Judge Doro uh, unfortunately has to keep excusing them because of Dow Brooks's uh, disruptions invariably during this trial. I'm actually surprised that they didn't. You know, I know one of them were excused uh, because there was uh, concerns by Dow because he uh, said that one of them had given him the finger. Exactly. Can you blame them? Can you blame them? All right. Five. No Thank you, juror number 19. No Thank you, juror number 41. No concerns Thank you, and juror number three. No all right, is there anything I haven't asked of the jurors or any other concerns related to that that you would want to bring to my attention? If so, just raise your hand. There are no hands raised. I can also tell you um, uh, from our initial days of COVID when we started up jury trials, we do have plexiglass panels that I could put in between anyone who would want one. Um, is there anyone here who would want that? If so, raise your hand. No hands our, are raised. Um, that's really all I have. I don't know if there's anything either the parties would want me to ask the jurors from the state Nothing on this topic. All right, Mr. Brooks. No. All right. Thank you. I'm going to excuse the jurors then, and then um, when we're ready, we'll have you brought back out. And thank you so much. You notice how Daryl Brooks is really eyeing these uh, jurors. He is really getting a bird's eye view of the people that will be making the decisions in light of his faith. He didn't have a chance in hell. <laughs> I really believe that they had already or should I say previously made their decisions. In other words, Daryl Brooks actually hit it on the on the head. He said, this, the decision was made before I got here. Well, so what if it was? Given that he was guilty by default. Thank you, be seated. Judge, can we ask a question? Go ahead. We counted 15 jurors in the courtroom. I excused one. Uh, you excused one earlier in the week, too, though. No, no, no. I'm only talking about the one. The other one I didn't excuse. Oh, I see. Um, and, okay. And, and thank you. I'll make a record of that. I, I did not excuse given when that person reported their symptoms and where we're at today. So it would be. So that person is here. Yes. And, and willing to continue serving. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Sure. Again, I, I'm surprised that they're willing to serve. You know, they have the opportunity really not to be there. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that they had the, the, their uh, uh, belongings were sequestered? They didn't have access to anything. And that's and, and with that information, that debunked even when Brooks tried to suggest that there was a Reddit post by one of them. He couldn't prove it because of a sequestration. Um. And I will make a further record that none of the jurors are wearing masks. Um, and um, I'm not going to mandate. I believe it's a personal choice. Um, and that would also be consistent with, I believe, our county policies as well. So unless there are anything related to that, I have a couple of other issues I need to address this morning. Go the person that's or the two people rather that that are having the COVID concerns. Um, I know you said you wasn't gonna ask them uh, had they test positive or the results of any testing. Uh, do you know? Do you know if there has been exposure on their end to COVID exactly, or is that just a call? 
First of all, you notice he's trying, you notice how he's being mild right now, you know, because he sees an opportunity. And so he wants to capitalize on that, given uh, this whole COVID situation. And so now he's pretending to be concerned uh, of this COVID and how could this impact uh, one of the jurors? He sees an opportunity. All this is is a tactic to further delay this. He wants to delay because if there is, in fact, a concern. All right. And the jurors, she just went Oh, she just polled the jurors in light of their concern. What did they say? No concern. So why is Dow even asking this? Because he's trying to find an opportunity to further delay this trial. Oh, come on. The writing is on the wall. It cannot be any more blatant than what it is. Should be. Um, my understanding is that I've had two jurors test positive throughout the course of this. Trial. See, see, look, 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 look at his facial, his facial expression is changing. See, now he's going to seize on that opportunity. Watch this. Watch that. He going to say something dumb in the process. But why would he be surprised given that he is a dumb ass? Excuse me. He is dumb. And, <laughs> and I make a further record that they're the only ones within six feet of each other. Right. They and perhaps our civilian bailiffs. Um, and uh, they've not been in obviously contact with anyone in the gallery. They, I don't know if maybe Attorney Opper might be within six feet um i don't think so but i haven't measured it obviously you're not within six feet of any of them exactly so that means he shouldn't be concerned if that if one of them has COVID, then he's not within six feet he's he's further further than six feet away from them so that should not be a technical concern for him um, but that's a good question to ask, and I'm glad you asked that. And I, I wanted to make a record of that. No, that was that was the question of him trying to find a way to try to delay this. Come on, Judge Dor, you know his game. Come on, you too old of a cat to be fooled by that stupid kitten. Yeah, that's that would be my question to it. Um, I guess in <laughs> reference to uh, he acting concerned, y'all. Me myself just having the same concern. Oh, please. Uh, a few weeks ago. So, yeah, but that was a lie. He lied about having COVID. That was debunked. Okay. That, that would be the reason why I would want to know exactly any details that could be provided. I'm providing all the details that I will. Um, again, for the record, you have not been exposed from my opinion because exactly. of the distance that you are away from them and my understanding based upon my review of county policy exactly yeah i'm not, I'm not saying i me myself have been Understood. exposed well that's why i asked them though too right i wanted to make sure they had no concerns or if they had a concern to see if i could accommodate it in any way exactly so why is he asking this she just polled the juror, in light of their concern, they said they're not concerned. Why is he pretending to be concerned now? Because he has a an agenda to delay. No different than he'd like to be in contempt of court right now. Why? Because that's the same principle. What is the principle? Delay. Hold this thing up. He knows he's going down in flames. But if I can seize on an opportunity to afford at any means necessary by using any tactic or antic necessary, then why not? The problem is there's no merit behind his concern. There's no logic. There's no persuasiveness behind his concern. He has no foundation to even suggest anything otherwise than what was already polled by Judge Doro polling the jurors. All right, come on, come on. Um, I'm satisfied that if they don't have a concern that we can continue forward exactly they don't have a concern so what is your point oh i already know yeah we trying we trying to delay this have they ever the entirety of the jury though have they been exposed in any way i don't know the specifics because of the six foot right rule and um no one has asked me to investigate that further you notice how he keeps on, you know, she's basically dismissing it. 
You know, because there's really no concern. We've already pulled the trigger. But you notice he is just gun ho trying to seize on an opportunity <laughs> to try to stop this. <laughs> and you notice it's not working at all. It didn't matter what direction Daryl went throughout the entirety of this tribunal. It never worked. Never worked. Wouldn't it be smart, though, to see? Oh, my God. Did he use the word smart, y'all? Come on. How dare he? <laughs> that, and i hate his facial expressions look at his facial expressions like he's really serious it wouldn't it be smart to see come on man was it smart for you to represent yourself no 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 no, no. i'm serious i'm serious. was it smart to go up against three skilled attorneys was it smart to drive with your windows down when you had tinted windows, what what is so smart about him that would give him the effrontery to ask Judge Dura? Wouldn't it be smart to see? Like, what the hell is he on? <laughs> this man is dumb as they come. Um, and he too dumb to know that he's dumb. I don't believe that's necessary under the circumstances. It's not. It's not. Well, if anything, just for future reference, like, what if it plays a part later on? Well, I'll certainly take your concerns under advisement, and if I believe any further questioning needs to be done, I'll do that. Right. At this point, I, I don't believe it needs to be done, but I'll think about that, and I'll take it under advisement, and if I change my mind, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm just saying, you know, because if anything, it, it probably would be smart for the long run and make sure no one else I, i'm sorry y'all but that the word smart should not come out of this man's mouth at all i cannot believe that he has the audacity to marry the effrontery to even use that word that doesn't make any sense <laughs> because there's nothing smart about daryl brooks <laughs> nothing at all it's compromise considering that let me make yeah. a record there. No one has indicated they are compromised. I don't think we can make assumptions about how anyone who's been exposed or tested is feeling. You can be asymptomatic and not even and know. test positive. You can have mild symptoms. I trust my jurors that they would report if they're not able to sit through the proceedings. And she just went over a polling with them. So, I mean, that should, you know, put his concerns really to bed. <laughs> you know, just like I talked about the 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 the. Uh, the, the Reddit post when the state gave their remarks concerning that. What did Zach say during that? He said, well, you know, uh, and I'll paraphrase, but given the sequestration of their electronics, um, any concerns of one of the jurors writing that, you know, uh, uh, with, with that understanding, that should put that to bed. And essentially it should just like his concern right now should be put to bed. There's no reason to think otherwise and i will but i will further advise them through the bailiffs that they are to report any if they ever get to a point where they feel they're not able to sit through here and if um so that we're advised and i can tell the parties now just shut the hell up it's not going your direction he it, we know what you're trying to do it's not going to work and as soon as you know she gets finished saying something he's trying to he just keeps he keeps trying to go down a road that's basically closed off. No different than what he did at that parade. That ba that barricade was to close off. He had no business going down there. So he's essentially doing the same thing relative to this colloquy, trying to go down a road that's closed off. It's not going to work. At that time, it wasn't Could have been flu. Could have been. Whatever, it's but it's not. It could have been anything, and then today is. Then you kind of worry about. Okay, let's move tomorrow, on. Tomorrow, Friday, over the weekend. Mr. Brooks, I share all of those concerns, but my other concern is that we are in the third <clears throat> week of trial, and that we should keep going until. Exactly. Let's keep going. Let's stop trying to be gun ho on something that's not going your direction. It's not working. Why do you keep bringing it up? She's already explained to you that there is no concern. 
uh, the conclusion of this matter, understanding uh, what has happened. See, now what, now, now see, she, she, okay, she's basically putting this whole situation to bed, but he's coming back in with something else. Here we go, y'all. All right, I just <laughs> wanted to put that on the record because I appreciate that. Seemed like the circumstances were different when it was me. See, but when it was with him, he was lying, wasn't he? <laughs> he was lying. And as a matter of fact, when the information came back, he didn't even want Judge Duro to, to, to y'all remember she said, uh, uh, what's the, let me see the paper. And he tried to pretend that it wasn't important. But for whatever reason, it was so important. It was, he was so concerned about him having COVID. But he couldn't prove it, could he? So how dare he say when it, was, when it was with me? Because you're a liar. That's why the circumstances were different. Just, just saying. Are you making any specific requests given this information? Well, I, I believe that the jury clearly all congregate together. I think it would be smart. Aren't they six feet apart? So why would it matter? And why does he keep using the word smart? <sighs> <laughs> to make sure everybody is tested. I mean, that, that's, that's, it would be smart to do. Please it. stop using smart. Why the hell does he keep using smart? And he's, he's using it in succession back to back. <laughs> oh, touch it, David. Say, how can this fool? Use such a word <laughs> so loosely. God, good grief. <laughs> I'm not going to mandate testing for the jurors that much. Because it's not necessary to mandate. She's already asked. The, she already polled the juror. Just like she going to poll them once those verdicts come in. <laughs> it is not going to be to his satisfaction. Oh, I love it. Come on. I can tell you. So that request is denied. And the grounds for the denial? Because it's not necessary. What the? F I'm not going to mandate that the jurors be subjected to testing once they're the ones who indicated they are comfortable being here. They, they just don't said have that. concerns. Exactly. And again, I would trust them to report to me if anything changes. And they haven't. All right. So why do we keep harping on this? Why are we still here? We need to be moving on with trial. Did she say this was the third week? Exactly. He knows the end is near. That's why he's doing this. He knows <laughs> he cannot win this. <laughs> and he's trying to seize on an opportunity by any means necessary. Because his fate is on the line. I would trust that too. But it would be Darryl. still refer back to Monday when the first knowledge of someone having an illness or a potential illness. Oh God. Was those same questions that were asked today asked Monday? Um, I did I'm, not. I'm sure. I certainly questioned them much more. <clears throat> for, I, it was a very brief. I put what I said to them on the record exactly. earlier. It was certainly not what we did here today, and the record reflects that. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sure, though, that all the jurors Monday said they didn't have any concerns as well. And then now today, someone else. Same thing being said. So I understand what you're saying. We're going. We're basically going in a circle. We're going in a circle. I, I you know what? If if I was Judge Duro, you know, after dismissing it and basically putting it to bed like that, she probably should not have asked him. Are you making a request? I would have just left it alone because when you do that, you know, you're opening up a can of worms because you know he's going to keep going. He's going to be circular about everything in terms of his agenda of delay. <laughs> I mean, I would have, I would have, you know, knowing that this is the third week of trial, we got to keep this rolling despite his protestations. Again, he keeps, he keeps harping on this. Anything being said. But are you making any specific oh, requests we as go. it relates to this topic and this issue? Well, you deny the request that. Any other requests? I just feel like it's smart for them. Oh, my God. All right. Now he's using the word smart. Now, you know, this Judge Doral just asked him any other request. So he's not saying anything other. He's uh, he, how many times has he, has he been saying, oh, I think it's smart. He keeps going back to what she already denied. So what's smart about that? This is how dumb he is. 
She just asked him any other request. He goes back to the same line that ain't working. So what's smart about that? You see how dumb he is? Stupid. Be tested. So it doesn't. So All right. It doesn't Deny it again. again. In the future. Deny it again, Judge. <laughs> like you did the first time. Because we're back. We're, we're right back to where we were. Or potentially come up again in the future. Because then it's. We'll all be looking back and saying, well, we could have prevented something like this from happening if we had to just nipped it in the bud from the get go. Watch this. Daryl Brooks could have prevented 7000 years if he didn't drive into that parade. See, you notice how he's trying to trying to use logic here. Oh, it would make sense or it would be smart. What was smart about driving through that parade? Why didn't he have that same logic or that same principle of thinking before he drove through that parade? Because what was smart, what was utterly intelligent about driving through a parade? And now your life is on the line because something dumb that you decided to do. Again, what is so smart about him? This is how dumb he is and don't need, and he doesn't even know it. It's like he's asymptomatic. Relative, relative to his own intellect because he's dumb and don't know it. It's just, it's just smart to... Oh my God, and he's using smart again. Oh my, Shut the hell up. Get that word out of your damn mouth. <laughs> you dumb... Oh, let me calm down my blood pressure. Woo. Like you say, you're on the side of caution. Why didn't he err on the side of caution before he drove through that parade? Come on! <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm well, going to continue. Exactly. I understand what you're saying. Um, but given well, the responses of the jurors today, I'm going to continue. Exactly. I'm going to base this off of their desire to continue, at least what I would interpret as their desire to continue with their service on this case. Right, because they said they, did, they didn't have any concern. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> See, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it because it's not going his direction. All right, then and I, I want to talk briefly about um, the jury. <laughs> you don't view. like that. I did provide the parties with um, a proposed instruction. Before I get to that, though, Mr. Brooks, I have been thinking about your request yesterday. Um, and I know I indicated to you that I would require you to be there. I've rethought that. I've had the overnight to really think about it. And um, if that is your decision to not be present for that, um, what I would say is this. You, I want you to be advised that you have a right to be at that jury view. Did you hear me say that? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much told me... Uh yesterday about you know everything that was going on i just didn't i didn't agree to or consent to it being well i was still confused about why did there even need to be a jury view see that doesn't even make sense that is, and see there, there again and it goes back to what i said he 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 loosely used that word smart okay but then he goes but then he comes right back in here and he says something utterly stupid Something that is not smart to say. The, why would it not? Why would there not be a jury view? <laughs> and speaking of that vehicle in question, I want to go to the next part of this when Inspector Schultz gives his assessment in light of the vehicle in question. <coughs> All right, we are back in. Inspector Schultz is making his way. Good afternoon, court. sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Um, do we need this easel up? No. All right. We're going to have can, to, Yeah. Or Detective Raglan can retrieve it? Yes. She's got to be right Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Me. Please remain standing. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Now, I like him because he gives an official report of what he inspected. 
And so that officially debunks Brooks across the board. I love it. Come on. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Ryan Schultz, R-Y-A-N-S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. I think you go ahead, your witness. Thank you. <coughs> Sir, how are you employed? I work for the Wisconsin State Patrol. How long have you been in law enforcement? I've been in law enforcement since 2014. Have all those years been with Wisconsin, with the Wisconsin State Patrol? Yes. What is your current position? My current position is the mechanical inspector for the Wisconsin State Patrol Technical Reconstruction Unit. Can you describe the duties of that position? Overrule the witness may answer. Um, my job basically is to conduct thorough and systematic inspections of vehicles that have been involved in crashes. Um, that can entail something as simple as taking photographs and looking at light bulbs to something more in depth or actually take the vehicles apart and actually look at the moving parts of the vehicles. Did you receive any training in order to perform those duties? Objection, relevance. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Can you briefly describe that training for the jury? Objection, relevance. Overruled, the witness may answer. Uh, a lot of the training that I received was on the job from prior inspectors. Prior to this, I was a diesel mechanic, and in addition to that, um, I have ASC and SAE certifications. And not being in, having any interest in cars, what are those certifications? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Um, SAE is for the electrical components in a car, basically, for the part that I am certified in. Um, ASE is for the mechanical components, which stands for the Automotive Service Excellence, <coughs> is what I believe it stands for. What is the purpose of a mechanical inspection? Uh, the purpose of a mechanical inspection is to determine if there was anything that was incorrect, defective, or broken on a vehicle um, prior to the crash that would have caused the vehicle itself to cause or contribute to the crash. On December 6, 2021, were you directed to go to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab to view a vehicle? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. It's foundational. Go ahead. Yes. What information did you have prior to going to that location? Objection, speculative. Um, the witness may How was he shut the hell up? Every question he keeps objecting. And you think the jury lo uh, is in favor of this? You think you think that is not getting on the jury's nerves? Every question that the state is asking him, you, that that's all that is is to try to further delay. That that's that. Come on, and it's not working. Why did why does he keep objecting when it keeps being overruled? because there's no basis of an objection. Uh, the information that I was given is that I was to set up an appointment there to look at a uh, Ford Escape that had been involved in a crash in the parade in Waukesha. Think about it, y'all. Have you ever uh, saw or watched a, a court tribunal or whatever, and every time the state, and I'm talking about a, a, an authentic, a real attorney. Can you imagine if a real, a real attorney objected incessantly every time the state asked a witness a question that that's not even normal <laughs> that's not normal <laughs> did you go to that location on that date yes i did did you do a mechanical inspection of the vehicle that you were sent to look at objection leading overruled the witness may answer leading. yes i did after <clears throat> Performing your inspection, did you draft a report? Yes, I did. And did that report contain the findings of your mechanical inspection from December 6th? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes. I provided to you prior to you going up on the stand what's been marked as Stibit, State's Exhibit 83. Do you have that in front of you? Yes. Can you briefly... Um, Identify it for um, how it's labeled, how many pages it consists of. Uh, what exhibit is that? Exhibit 83. 83. It's the uh, Crash Reconstruction Mechanical Inspection Report. In other words, the evidence against him. He don't need to be asking about any exhibits because all the exhibits 
point to his destruction, what he did. I hate, you know what? There was even a part of the trial where he wanted the uh, the video to be played at regular speed. Why? You want to further expose yourself? <laughs> regular speed. <laughs> I mean, this dude doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Can it be played at regular speed, Gerard? That's that is dumb. <laughs> Yes. It wasn't like the exhibit being played at regular speed was going to help him or strengthen his case. Not at all. If anything, it was prejudicial against him. He was doomed. See, goes back to my point. The man is dumb and I'm afraid that he doesn't know it. <laughs> Apparently. Go ahead. I haven't ruled on it yet, so go ahead and uh, ask your questions, Attorney Casey. Sir, how many pages does this report consist of? Ten. And that is front and back sides? Correct. Objection. Overruled. The witness may answer. And on the face sheet of Exhibit 83, um, what information does it contain on that as it relates to this investigation? <laughs> um, at the top, it contains a uh, case number and recon number, which match my name, the reconstructionist, and then it begins the report and um, vehicle identification information, and then on the bottom, it's marked with uh, exhibit number 83. What car were you inspecting? Objection, leading. Um, overruled the witness my answer. 2010 Ford Escape. Exactly. All of that stuff is relevant. They need to know what exact vehicle. And, and every time he always objects, he always say relevancy. Guess what? That's very relevant. That's a very relevant question by the state when they asked him which vehicle did he what, what did he inspect? And he confirmed what it was. So that way there's no issue. They want to get everything on the record. They want everything in terms of the evidence in light of what the jury has. Well, not the jury, but the state has provided so that way there can be a proper uh, deliberation on the facts or the evidence relative to these exhibits. Uh, even shown to them in his testimony in light of what he inspected, which was the 2010 Ford Escape. And what color was it? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Red. Absolutely. And a license plate number associated with that vehicle? A. Adam D. David P. Paul 9256. And on the report, um, the vehicle identification number on Exhibit 83, um, where did that information come from? The vehicle identification number I verify on the inside of the door jam of the vehicle. Um, it's there's two VINs on each vehicle. One's a public VIN under the windshield, and one is inside the door jam of the vehicle. I always use the one inside the door jam of the vehicle first. Take note of it, and then cross-reference it with the public VIN on the vehicle to make sure that they both match. And did they in this case? Objection. Uh, I have the ten pages, and nowhere on here does it say it's a, it's a exhibit. That's improper. No overrule. That's because it was marked for purposes of trial. It has an exhibit sticker now. So your objections noted. It's overruled. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> well, well, just, I to the same. well, maybe you should have. Maybe he should have read through the discovery that was turned over to him. See, in other words, what he doesn't have is not the court's fault. Okay, he tried to blame. Oh, he just tried to play victim throughout all of this. He even admitted that he didn't go through all that stuff. All right. He's not an attorney. All right. Well, just because you're not an attorney doesn't make it, you know, it's not the court's fault. Not at all. You decided to do this. See, goes back to goes back to what I've been saying all along. The man is dumb, but I'm afraid. Touch a neighbor and say, I'm afraid. The dummy doesn't know it. <laughs> The witness may answer the question. It's right. been marked as an exhibit. Right. Shut up. He's not even supposed to be talking. That's why I said that's improper. He's not testifying. Man is dumb, man. Go ahead, sir. Can you restate the question? I forgot what it was. 
I think I did too, but let's go with this one. Right, because he keeps interrupting. The man forgot what he was saying. <laughs> By the way, do you notice when um, Inspector Schultz talk about the door jam? I thought about Daryl Brooks when they actually found the vehicle. Because y'all remember when Detective Carpenter had said that um, the VIN number had linked back to his mother, Dawn Woods. Well, that's where Daryl, that's where he was jammed. And so there's a leave. There's overlap with there's overlap with that. The word jam because he was jammed. That's how he was caught. The key was found. Everything jammed, Mr. Brooks, in this trial. Um, is the VIN number that you saw on the door? You said that you cross referenced it with the uh, VIN number, public VIN number. Um, did you do that in this case? Yes. And did they match? Yes. Wow, they matched. No different than that than the vehicle identification number matched linked to his mom. Yo, I the, the state. I think I said this before. I, the state they they went. It's like they went too far, you know. Um, just just in in terms of the evidentiary phase of all of, of what they had, like they just went too far. A lot of that really wasn't necessary. It, they just they had too much. <laughs> It was overflow. I know that's right. Does it give... He was in a jam. <laughs> a drive train description on that first page or front page. Yes, it does. And first of all, I don't know what that means, but um, what is that? Objection leading. Overrule. The witness may answer. Drive train description describes the drive of the vehicle, basically how it's operated on the roadway so in this case it's an automatic automatic transmission doesn't have a clutch you don't have to shift the gears and it's front wheel drive meaning that it's not all wheel drive or rear wheel drive like a pickup truck it's just front wheel drive and there, is there a picture on the front of exhibit 83 yes overruled the witness may answer just a reminder to wait until i've ruled on any objection thank you yes and what is that picture of it's a picture of the 2010 escape. That you did the mechanical inspection on? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes. Exactly. You notice it wasn't no yellow Corvette. No, it was the vehicle in question, that same vehicle that that idiot was driving. I love this. They are just comprehensively just going over everything, just, you know, kind of matching, linking everything. I mean, every the state, uh, like I said before, that just the strategically had this just laid out. And there was no way for Brooks to get out of this other than by technicality and this is why i've been saying all along uh each of the when i say the part i'll even include the judge and even though she wasn't a party in this but the state was very meticulous very careful and so was judge doro all right uh and her the, the way she conducted the state was very careful, even though they had all this evidence. They, the last thing they wanted for this to uh, all that hard work that they put in to try and to dethrone, to take this man down. They did not want anything to come back to bite them in that behind. So I just like how uh, they strategically just had this down, man. Oh, have you had you authored this report? I did. Have you had a chance to review it since you've authored it? Yes. Is the information contained within this report accurate? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Lead. Shut answer. up. Yes, it is. I would ask, I would move States Exhibit 83 into evidence. Objection. Uh oh. <laughs> Objection for what? <laughs> Your objections noted. It's it overruled. 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 Exhibit 83 is received. So sir, is my sir. paperwork ever going to say Exhibit 83? Or is it just going to be this? What the hell? Bro! First, I'll take that up outside the presence of the jury later, but we're going to continue. It was Go brought ahead. up in front of the jury. Mr. Brooks, we're going to continue with the questioning of this witness. Trying he's trying he's trying to create conflict that's what he's doing he that's what he because they, they got him beat basically y'all 
He's defeated. The man defeated in or conquered. He's done. And he knows that. But he's trying to create that conflict. Trying to suggest he didn't have something. So that way the jurors could feel so. Listen, if one of those jurors already gave him the finger, why would he even try to use a tactic? For them to potentially feel sorry for him because he didn't get it. He did, it wasn't on the paper that he's alleging. Come on, this man is a dumb fool. No one's the, the exhibit. To my understanding has previously been provided to you. Y'all hear what he's saying? Y'all trying to be slick. He thinks the jury is gonna be on his side, bro. It's already too late. One of them gave you the finger, bro. <laughs> It's game over. We just trying to get through this process. That's why I told y'all earlier, I'm surprised that some of these jurors even uh, wanted to hang on, you know, other than, you know, not having to deal with it. Or maybe they wanted to stay on because you never know. You know, the judge could have had randomly somebody else that could have been dumb that agreed with him. So I'm glad that they didn't stay on in theory, if you think about that. Exactly. It's now been marked as an exhibit for trial purposes. I got something I don't have, though. Well, maybe you should have went through the discovery. Maybe you should have read through all of that. Just like he was talking about the video relative to those exhibits. Talking about he didn't have that. It's not the court's fault. When you decide to be a pro se defendant, guess what? Basically, the ball is in your court. Now you have to act like an attorney. The ball is in your court. You forfeited that. You can't call a, 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 a prior counsel back in for nothing. You forfeited that. So it's not the court's fault relative to what he's claiming to not have. I know that's right. And you think the jury care? He's trying to create a conflict. Go ahead. Shut up. Shut your mouth. They ain't buying what you're saying. This was previously turned over. It was, and I believe the defendant has a copy of it in front of him. Thank and you. where does Please it say continue. Exhibit 83? Does it, it doesn't say that this was Again, going to be we'll used as Again, we'll take this up outside the presence of the jury later. It's not something we need to do Exactly. Right Go ahead and ask your questions. Thank you, Your Honor. And I would object and move to strike from the record any commentary that the defendant was making um, in the last five minutes. What was that? In other words, shut up. We're cutting what you said. Because it was nonsense. Court will strike the commentary We're striking that was made. It. I'm not sure if it was picked up or not. But as a reminder to the jurors, the statements made by parties and lawyers are not evidence. Um, the testimony and other evidence that's received is the evidence the jury will ultimately consider. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, can you briefly describe the condition of the vehicle when you inspected it on December 6th? Uh, yeah, the vehicle had uh, quite a bit of front end damage. Wow. The uh, bumper cover was pushed back. The grill was pushed back into the engine bay um, and into the radiator. That was also pushed backwards in towards the engine. The hood was folded up in the air. Both lights were broken out of the front. Wow. Um, there was a quite a bit of debris and unknown things stuck to the exterior of the vehicle. Um, and there was also some damage to the sides of the vehicle. Do you know why you had to go to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab in order to do the inspection? Objection leading. Um, overrule the witness may answer. I was requested to go to the State Crime Lab to do the inspection because they had not yet completed um, DNA sampling, so until they had it finished, it was going to be retained inside the crime lab. So in the interest of not moving the vehicle again, once they were done with DNA, they had me come to the crime lab to do the testing and inspection. So the first section of your report, and I'm just going to direct your attention to page 3 of Exhibit 83, um, talks about the tires and the Suspension and tie rods. Do you see that? Objection leading. Overrule. Overrule. The witness may answer. Yes. 
And can you describe for the jury what part of the inspection, describe this part of the inspection. Objection. <laughs> Overruled, the witness may answer. The report's been received by the, by the court, and the state may direct the witness to various points at its discretion. And when was it made an exhibit? Shut your mouth! Shut up! He's not even supposed to be saying that. That needs to be struck. Go ahead, Attorney Basie. Exactly. Continue. Thank you. Sir, can you... Describe the information contained in the first section of the report under the heading tires, wheels, steering, suspension, brakes. Objection leading. There's nothing leading about that. Let me say this. There's a lot of people when they watch this trial. Okay. There's a lot of people that watch this trial. And I've heard people say, oh, my God, I, I want to just I wanted to come through my iPad and just knock him out. Well, let me th how do you think the jurors probably felt? Well, obviously, given the verdicts, <laughs> given his custodial status, <laughs> thanks to the jurors. But how do you think they felt just like we? We did. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. So under this section, it's broken down into four parts. One for axle one left, which is the driver's side front axle. The left side would refer to it as you're sitting in the vehicle facing forward. Um, the right side would refer to the passenger side. So axle one is the frontmost axle. Axle two is the rearmost, left and right. And it breaks each individual um, wheel end component systems down. And then from that, I take each one apart and inspect them thoroughly, brakes, tires, steering components, everything. front axle obviously, suspension condition, and anything else that's at the wheel end that I can inspect. Wow. And did you do that in this case? Yes. What observations did you make? Um, first, on axle one left, which would be the driver's side front, <coughs> the tie rod end was one. Um, about an eighth of an inch of play in the tie rod end in the ball joint itself. So when you turn the steering wheel or turn the wheel, there was a little bit of play in the tie rod. Still attached, um, still intact, still functioning, still able to steer the vehicle, but just worn to the point that it needed replacement before it got any worse. Was that something that would create any problems in operating the car, for example, on November 21st, 2021? Objection speculative. Overruled this witness. Speculative may about it. Not at all. Um, Hold on. He's been qualified under 907 um, 02. I direct your attention to 907 02 through 907 07, Mr. Brooks. Go ahead. Exactly. Okay, so if you're being called that name, and that's referring to a specific date, how do we know that's not speculation? Um, the objections noted and it's overruled. overruled. The witness may answer. Why would it be speculation if it's coming from a person that is an inspector that gave an, a, an official assessment? How is that speculative? What was speculative is the crap that he was talking about. And let's go to that. In this part of the trial, we want to go over the difference between what is speculative and what is official. Come on. I'm sending that. I will send Since it. Since he objected to speculation. Here we go. I love it. With high importance then. We'll see what response I get. Um, <laughs> but I don't have anything. If you want to generally tell me the topic, we can cover it uh -huh. verbally. Some BS. Uh, the topic is... Uh... <laughs> By the way, he's at, he actually thinks he's going to go home. Because <laughs> he has something exculpatory, so he says, Here we go. <laughs> Turn into uh, exculpatory evidence. Ah, oh, please. Uh, some things were learned. And uh, once. You mean some speculation uh, came up? <laughs> they came to my attention. I felt the need to immediately address the court uh, about this information. Um. Right, what the, information make an offer of proof for me, sir? The uh, the expert witness uh, for the prosecution in, in regards to, um, I believe it was inspecting the vehicle. 
uh, uh, Officer Ryan Schultz. Uh huh. Um, who we who we just heard from that gave an official assessment. Uh huh. And was asked of did he know if there were any uh, recalls on that vehicle, and I believe that. Uh, a Brady claim should be visited because there were, in fact, recalls on that vehicle. In, in fact, there were recalls on the Ford Escape models from 2008 through 2010 um, in regards to the throttle body malfunctioning and causing the vehicles to accelerate and not being able to be stopped. Um, there is a class action lawsuit where Ford Company were sued because of this and those vehicles models from the year 2008 through 2010 were recalled that is a damn lie <laughs> and he is like blatantly lying that is very important information in regards to <laughs> the vehicle in question being a ford escape 2010 He's trying to find an escape out of this. That's the problem. But it ain't going to work because he's going off of speculation. <laughs> um, this information nah. is very easily obtained just by pulling it up and you will see a class action lawsuit. Obviously, if it's a class action lawsuit, then it's pretty easy to. So what's be, your request, sir? Uh, my request is. And by the way, I want you all to look at oh my god i love her expression look at judge doro's expression when he has the affrontery they say that it need the, 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 the these counts need to be dismissed that is crazy <laughs> to find out if <laughs> officer schultz knew if schultz knew don't you think he would have already said that come on man come on <laughs> <laughs> to find out if the prosecution knew that there was a recall on those vehicles because they knew it wasn't and in light of the uh, in light of the bullshit the ahead. fact that these vehicles were recalled because of this malfunctioning uh, throttle body for uh <laughs> I believe it's. Oh my God. Child, please. Counts 1 through 73 to be dismissed. Child, please. Oh, did you see that look with Judge Doro? She looked at him like, nigga. <laughs> What's the response from the state defendant? Please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, as Trooper Schultz testified exactly. um, during his examination um, consistent with our research there are no active recalls listed for the Ford Escape right as trooper inspector Schultz noted noted during his testimony that uh, Ford listed an extended warranty for the throttle body on the escape the warranty was extended to 10 years of age and 150,000 miles the escape is more than 10 years old and has more than 150,000 Miles. Um, also, he noted specifically in his report that he did not note any defect in the throttle body as previously described in this report. Um, there was no recall in the throttle body. Um, NHTSA did do an investigation into allegedly defective Ford throttle bodies, which would have impacted this year. Basically, the electronic throttle body failures would have resulted in engine stall or surge while entering traffic from a stop position or while driving at highway speeds, um, neither of which I believe occurred here. Exactly. Further, tr uh, Inspector Schultz would testify that um, that does not prevent the brake from working. <laughs> right. So if this had been activated on this car, which it was not, but if it had been, and this defendant would have pushed down on the brake. It would have stopped. Um, it would have obviously. stopped the car. Right. Uh, further, if this was a problem, there would have been um, the malfunction indicator lamp or the wrench light would have been illuminated as Trooper Schultz um, or Inspector Schultz testified when he started the vehicle and checked the um, indicator lights. None of them were lit. 
further, if there was this, he would have um, observed material buildup on the commutator. Um, there was no such buildup observed. Not at all. There were no problems um, with the throttle, um, electronic throttle body. Um, that was part of his report. So this is basically game over. They just they just proved. You know, speaking of, she mentioned the the indicator. Well, this is indicatory that they have an official report. So how can he object on speculation? Come on, he's the only one with speculation. <laughs> If it doesn't work, and when it doesn't work, when things doesn't go his way, then he goes right back to being narcissistic. He goes right back to who he really is, and we will find that out shortly. Uh, therefore, this is, although there may have been some cars who had this problem, um, the <coughs> car that the defendant was driving on this date did not have that problem. Not at all. That was testified during the elect or the um, vehicle inspection. The defendant had the opportunity to cross-examine Inspector Schultz um, with regard to that. And again, in running uh, the defendant's mom's um, VIN number through NHTSA, um, National Highway um, Traffic and Safety. They just had too much against him. Oh my goodness. He Administration. Um, there are for this particular VIN number for this car that the defendant was driving, zero unrepaired recalls. <laughs> so so this is game over. Game over. How can okay, what is his defense to that? How can what can he say that is so escopatory? What? Oh, he got that wrong. It sounds like the state has escopatory evidence against him. <laughs> He, he got that in reverse. So it's a mood issue. Exactly. I don't believe it's a mood issue. Uh, it don't matter what you believe, man. <laughs> and I actually have... Uh, you, got, the, you got bull. You got BS. That's what you got. Report should be... <laughs> in the mail room. In the mail room as we speak. I had everything uh, sent over priority mail. The actual... Uh, information about the class action lawsuit the actual information about the uh the recalls for those oh, models like let's, I said, let's fast forward because i know. you know what let's fast forward this because i it, it's it's bs that we're listening to the whole point is it didn't go his way y'all seen this i just wanted to recap it i did say that we were doing different um uh, parts of this trial that was going to be uh compilations of it but we already know it didn't go his way because he brought speculation and speculation does not work in a courtroom you have to he said he had exculpatory evidence what is so exculpatory about speculation that that is it, exculpatory and speculation is absolutely unrelated they th that's two different meanings but yet he had it in reverse no it was the state that had overwhelming and exculpatory evidence against you, my friend. So let's fast forward this. I just like when he gets, when it doesn't go his way and Judge Dora tells him otherwise, and he doesn't like it. I'd further note that you had a full and fair opportunity exactly. to cross-examine uh, the inspector regarding his mechanical inspection. Um, it's not new information. And more importantly, as it relates to this particular vehicle, based upon the testimony of uh, Inspector Schultz, um, it's speculative as to... Thank you, thank you, thank you. She just told him what you have is speculative. But yet he kept objecting on speculation. See, he's dumb and don't even know it because it's asymptomatic. He don't even know he's dumb. <laughs> Listen, y'all. All right, I, you know, I want to see. What, I like when he gets thrown out of the courtroom. Yeah, yeah. Whether this vehicle would be impacted. I want to see that temper tantrum. Number one, by the class action, and number two, uh, <laughs> any throttle body uh, problems, uh, because again, there was a full inspection. That report was provided to you. He testified on direct examination about there being no active recalls, and more importantly, he testified about uh, what. Uh, impact uh, the throttle body would have and what he would expect to see if there were any issues uh, with it. 
Um, I am aware that the ICF, I did receive an email, it's one page uh, with um, and if I was Judge Dura, I would have mentioned, you know, she talked about the ICF. I would have, I would have said, yeah, the ICF uh, with your name, Dara Brooks, on there. Because <laughs> that's the only way she could receive it, right? It's got to be his name. But yet he kept on saying he don't identify by that name. The man was just dumb. He was just dumb across the board. <laughs> what you said, it's, I have to turn my head. I have to figure out how to flip it. So give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Just for Shut up. Hold on. Let me finish my record. Shut up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn because it's the only way I can read. It says, sure, ICF ma'am. says the state's expert witness who did the inspection on the vehicle in this incident needs to be recalled. No later than Wednesday, I just learned of some information that is extremely vital. Um, no, he learned of information that is extremely speculative. <laughs> so um, I, I understand the information that you're providing me. But again, you had a full and fair opportunity to cross-examine this witness. This information was apparently well known. I'd also note the vehicle's registered to your mother. Exactly. So my understanding of recalls, I think what is common knowledge, is that a registered owner would receive uh, information regarding the recalls and what to do. Um, and presumably she would have provided that information uh, to anyone operating that vehicle or taking care of it. We have none of that information none before us it. by way of fact or even an offer of proof Speculation. that even she received that information and did nothing with it or whether um, anyone else who operated that uh, did anything with it or not. The bottom line is there is absolutely no Brady violation by the state. It's exactly. not the type of information. They didn't hide anything from him. And they certainly didn't hide anything in front of the jury. He always tried to say, oh, y'all trying to hide things from the jury. No. How the hell was the state hiding anything from the jury when they went when, when they had exhibits that was being published to them? It's nothing that they was hiding. If anything, he was hiding. She had to tell him, you know, to remove his mask. See, he was hiding. He didn't want to be seen. That's why he had his head down. Mr. Brooks, remove your mask. Then he got mad. Oh, I was writing something down. If anything, he should be labeled as Brady. He was hiding, trying to trying to hide his identity by saying that he don't go by that name. That's Brady. <laughs> oh, he's a fool. They would have been required to turn over. Um, and from my understanding and review of Exhibit 83, um, What's important to this case is that the mechanical inspection specifically looked at that issue nonetheless and found that as to this particular vehicle, there was no recall. Uh, there were no issues with that. that you know what? You know what? You know what? I like how. All right. So the judge had given the state an opportunity uh, to debunk his BS claim of a recall on that vehicle. They debunked him, and then the judge came behind the state debunking him. They both debunked him. <laughs> they did. They both debunked him. Okay, where are you going now, Brooks? <laughs> what you going to do now? <laughs> it impacted the mechanical function uh, during the incident in question. Um, so I'll deny him. The state's offer proof as to what would have been the issues based upon the information provided. And again, without anything further from you by way of your offer of proof, I can't uh, make a finding, number one, that there's a Brady violation, and number two, that the information you seek to cross-examine him on would have any In impact, impact not whatsoever. At all. So I'll deny the request Thank you. to dismiss the case, exactly. and I'll deny the request to recall this witness. See, you notice she said she denies the request to dismiss the case because he brought that up because he thought he was going home. He thought they were going to really dismiss this case because of some BS speculation that he came up with. That is completely <laughs> BS. Hey, you're, hold, you're on. On. Let, hold on. Um, let me have the state just make their statement. I'll give you the last word on it. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, the inspector Schultz's mechanical inspection report was provided to the defense on April 29th, 2022. I noted that when the defendant was cross-examining Inspector Schultz, um, he did have the report in front of him and it was questioning, um, asking questions directly related to information contained in that report. All right, go ahead, Mr. Brooks. 
the when you spoke of the <laughs> owner of the vehicle, that's who gave me the information. So he thinks that he thinks that he's going to be able to alter the decision uh, relative to what the judge ruled on. She ruled on the state because the state made more sense. They had they had official information. They made way more sense than him. And he thinks he's going to sway the judge. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Come on with it. Y'all remember he said that during the victim impact statement. Come on with it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Come on with it with that BS. Come on with it. My mother gave me the information of, of this. You're I, your co-conspirator trying to help you. See that? She basically gave him BS. But then, go, but then lies by uh, poly, uh, uh, apologizing to the family. But she tried to help him out of this. That's why he wanted it dismissed. So she basically helped him with some BS. But then turns around and says she apologized. Him and his grandmother. Oh, they want to give an apology. That's BS, man. They all need to go down in flames. I had no knowledge until she told me. And so, what does that mean? I came into the information, and she was the one that said, I'm going to send you all the information that you need so you can present it to the court. Send him all the information to try to get him out of killing all those people. Oh, but yet she comes to court and wants to uh, 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 send an apology. The grandmother even did it. Oh, I, I I understand that there's sparks. Oh, man, and shut up. You didn't care. They didn't care about that. That's why they was arguing mental illness to try to get him out of this. So I didn't. This I understand that, sir. This but wasn't your request is not timely. Your request is denied, basically. So you have had this information for quite some time, either through counsel. I did not have it for quite let some time. Let me make time. my record, it was just, either through counsel. It was just Shut up and let us speak. That's not what I'm saying. You've had the information about this report for quite some time, either through prior counsel or through um, all of the discovery that was turned over to you when you took over your representation of your own case. The fact that Yeah, when he was dumb enough to take over his own case. Don't learn this. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit too late. And I understand that may seem fair to you, but uh, when I, even uh, when I consider the information that you're providing to me, speculative. it's it's speculative <laughs> on your part as to whether there's any exactly. impact on this. So basically the judge is repeating what she already said. Okay, I love this. Particular vehicle <laughs> because of the inspection that was done. And you had a full and fair opportunity to cross-examine the inspector he about information that was readily obtainable and researchable by you prior to the time that you uh, cross-examined this witness. It was not really readily available for me to expect at the time. I don't have access to the internet. Oh well. So how how would I be able to? Mr. Brooks, you're telling me your mother had that information. No, so, I'm and telling I'm gonna you trust she just told me this information. It don't matter. I have the phone calls to prove it. I understand that. I'm denying the request. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh-oh. Now he's going to have a tantrum. He's going off now because it's not going. It's not going his direction. <laughs> I would like a... Uh, so object. that's my decision. I object to that, Your Honor. I understand. I object. So he thinks objecting to that is going to impact anything. Man, sit down. Shut your, shut your mouth. <laughs> my decision, I expect that you respect the decision, at least no. as we're not going to debate, debate it further. <laughs> yes. I now have the... Um, you notice he said yes? How was that helping him d debating it? That's not... This this is not the appellate court. The appellate court is where you need to be bringing your 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 your, your I guess the things that you don't agree with. That's not going. This is what the, what he's doing is not going to change the mind of the judge. So why did he think it was necessary to keep going back and forth with her? Why? When it didn't have any impact whatsoever in terms of getting him out of this. ICF. Um. It needs to be addressed, Your Honor. It needs to be addressed. Madam Clerk, I just gave that to you. All right, so Mr. Brooks, I respectfully Brooks, object. Here we go. I respectfully go. object, Your Honor. Like that, that, like his objection has an impact. Child, please. And request a legal reconsideration of your ruling, Your Honor. 
Um, de it's denied. denied. The request for reconsideration is denied. Ha ha. No legal basis for me to exactly. respect point. Reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling. Your so, all right, Mr. Brooks, we need to keep <laughs> going. For the record, may I request a legal or factual basis for your ruling? Your Denied. <laughs> I provided an oral ruling today. The record stands, sir. For the record, may I respectfully request a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law? Denied. This issue. Your request is denied. For the record, may I respectfully move for an interlocutory declaratory appeal denied. of this matter? Um. I wouldn't be the one you would make that request. Right, to. she's not the appellate court. Okay, all right, next. Sir, so I can't For the record, may I move yes to stay no. these proceedings until the denied. instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction. That request is denied. Wow, his his hairline overlaps what she just said. Denied. <laughs> All right, y'all. All right, y'all. I'm not going to over. I, wow, I probably, I know I went over an hour with this. Listen, y'all, leave your comments. <laughs> this man is a fool. I wanted to lay out exactly how dumb he is, but the problem is he doesn't know it. He's asymptomatic. Leave your comment. I love to hear what you all have to say in the comments regarding this idiot that is before us. <laughs> Thank you for listening.